What? What's going on here? Is it just me or does or does the dress this thing wears kind of look like Charlie's dress? Nah, it's probably just my imagination. And these voices, they sound like Charlie's. But why? The hazy presence was wiped out and black things swelled up fiercely from under her feet. The little girl warped as she swelled up, changing form. She now had long, fully grown arms and legs swaying from side to side. So does that mean that little girl was a meta creature all along? There was something rising up from the shadow of darkness, at the feet of what used to be a powerless little girl, several black things writhed like turbulent water. Uncountable black necks stretched up, uncountable red eyes shone, that black monster. The darkness of night, the darkness of the girl's feet took form. A black body, red eyes, that was the terrifying rumor of London. Something she'd seen several times before, what someone called a meta creature, something which shouldn't exist outside of a fairy tale. Monsters born from darkness, demons, which undulated as drops of red fell from them. They rose up around the girl as if forming a cage, countless writhing eye red eyes looked at her. Yes, they were looking at Mary. <coughs> oh, I forgot. But tears didn't come out, nor screams. With her breathing stopped, her throat could only produce a squeak. Her mind grew hazy. No, her thoughts wouldn't settle. The same confusion as always. A black monster gazing at her while writhing. On the stream of confused thoughts, only her willpower stood firm as she had back tears, as she wrung a gasp out of her throat. She thought just one thing. She noticed just one thing. Only a little, but her voice came out. A breath left her throat, trapping air began flowing again, bringing oxygen to her brain. Her shaking vision settled slightly, that state of equilibrium lasted only for a moment. She looked around her, it was dark, no one was there, the darkness continuing on forever told her that everything was colored black. Ah, uh, the same as usual, even though the monsters weren't looking at her right eye. Everything was the same as usual. <laughs> Her voice was hoarse. Her momentary stability ended and her mind shook again. But as usual, her breathing hadn't stopped. It hadn't stopped. She was still breathing. Her limbs were shaking, but she could definitely move them. Curl up and be scared. Shiver and stare at it. Or ask those red eyes why. The terror boiling up did interfere with the thoughts, but she knew what to do, what she had to do, her hands and legs moved. Mary's thoughts were losing their calm, but she nonetheless saw the monster in her shaking vision, and all its eyes within the black. And every one of them. This was different from before. Different. The monsters were looking all around them. They weren't looking at her, not one of the countless eyes around the silhouette. She thought Mary was able to choose what she had to do without being numbed by terror, which meant 
欲しいとは言わないのね It seems she wants her entire body, her entire existence instead of just her eye, huh? She bit her lower lip. In the end, she couldn't understand what was going on. Her thoughts were numbed by fear, but she still. Tara filled her body to the point where she couldn't feel her fingertips, and she was shaking so much her knees were getting tired. But despite that, she could run. No, that wasn't true. I didn't know that I was going to be able her forehead hurt unexpectedly. At the same time, one thought of Mary's was prevented. Who was this black monster? When she thought that, the effect of Jane's strange whisper, a little of it slipped into her mind. The priorities in her mind were reordered, running. That was the one thing she thought about. As she remembered Lord Vidoc's theory, she focused on running properly. Even if she couldn't escape the terror, her legs moving forwards at least she could. Run, run, get away from the monster, and then after that he would come. Moran said, uh, Moran had said they knew the situation. Mary ran forwards, the monster split into six forms, and chased after her with ferocious speed as she felt their presence behind her. Okay, here we go. And as I recall, I'm said we only have to do this one more time. Does it mean this will be the last minigame section? What should have been an empty road had changed into a strangely warped black city. It seemed to be made not of buildings, but of unsettling black shadows. The giant golden clock rising up into the black sky almost like an eye. The black city, how many times had she come here? The sky, the LA paving stones, the walls of buildings, everything was dark and black, lacking any other color. Her eyes wouldn't adapt to it. She was used to how it felt. She knew her limbs could run here even without seeing what lay ahead. But it was dark, so very dark. It was a little different from closing one's eyes. If she wasn't careful, she'd fall into the illusion that she was standing in darkness. Mary ran. Within the darkness, she ran. As she heard the sound of grating monsters behind her, she ran. Just like back then, she put her hand in her pocket and took it out. She held it tight, careful not to drop it. Her engine phone, a pocket watch type Charlie had given her. She didn't bother spinning the road to redial, it wouldn't connect anyway. Had someone given birth to that monster? For a moment her thoughts warped. Would someone lose their life again, thinking that produced terror stronger than that of the approaching monster? Jane's faint magic tormented Mary, the possibility of exposing someone's life to danger. She had to think about it, and yet the age in her forehead interfered. She looked at the numbers, she had to look for these voices, her memories came back bit by bit. What she needed to survive the interstice of Shire North, four screams, four numbers. Just like on that night, at that time. So the boss meta creatures right behind us. Let's uh, have a look at the map. Hmm. So we have four corners. And I guess in each of them is one of the voices. So let's just go on. 
Let's get a head start right away. My vision lurches to one side. I could feel sharp pain in my right knee. For just a moment I hesitated. No, we don't hesitate. I don't care, I keep running, I just keep ru ca running according to the exercise theory. I won't think about the pain or those monsters. I can't think about it. One dash regained. Nice! The boss meta creature didn't move at all, which, which is good. Let's not waste our sprints here. And what is this here? Over here is it some kind of trap? But is it a trap for us or the meta creatures? Hmm. Let's just find out what it does. Huh? What's this? A cube appeared. With a loud rumbling uh, sound, walls rise up right behind me and in front of me. I've been trapped. How do I get out of here? I don't know. So maybe the cube will disappear when I find the voice. No, mm. oh, it's gone. Okay. Mm, the walls obstructing the path in front of me disappear. Thank goodness, now I can move onward. I take some deep breaths and start running again. But there's a voice somewhere around here, so I have to find that first. Black roads, black walls, a black world in the corner of my mind. I remember a fairy tale I heard a long time ago of a giant who caught the wo whole sky with black, an unsettling fairy tale from Kadarth, the Shadow Builder. So I guess the, the voice is somewhere around here. Let's just find out. There it is. Okay. She had a voice, someone's voice. No, it was it was someone's scream. So much it felt like it had a form. So much it felt like she could grab hold of it. There was a voice within the darkness, within the black city, casting even blacker shadows, floating. Someone's. Well, that's definitely Charlie's voice. Does it mean that Charlie is the so-called mother of this meta creature here? Which would mean that she would die when uh, M devours it. No, oh, I see. I see tragedy approaching. Someone's voice! Mary definitely heard it. The voice of a shaking girl. She would never mistake that voice. She'd wanted to hear it for a long time. She'd wanted to hear her voice. It closely resembled the voice she'd yearned for. 